This is WKYT This Morning. Kentucky Morning Start right here on WKYT. Good morning. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. We've got a lot going on this morning. Here are your headlines on this Tuesday, September 20th. Now at 630, the U.S. Attorney General heading to the bluegrass today to spread awareness of the ongoing heroin epidemic. The search is on for an armed thief following an overnight robbery at a Lexington drugstore. And millions have been recalled over safety concerns. But Samsung says it's now ready to roll out more of those Galaxy Note 7s. Find out when and where ahead here on WKYT This Morning. All right, Micah, the question on everyone's mind this morning <laughs> is where is the fall weather, isn't when, it? It's a good question. When is it going to arrive? I mean, that is the question. I'll tell you this. You know, we get shots here and there. Mm -hmm. This is still summer. you got to keep in mind a lot of people are asking, where's fall? When's fall right. ever going to get here? Well, we're still in summer, so it's not here just yet. <laughs> Huge dome of higher pressure right over the central portion of the United States. And what that does is it keeps everybody dry that's around that. The, the thing that's going to happen is we'll have some rain move around us. It's basically you go from California and off towards, say, portions of Nevada and then roll up toward the Dakotas, back toward the Great Lakes, and over toward the eastern seaboard. So obviously this high pressure system is throwing everything around that, and we're actually in that bubble, which we won't see any rain. Temperatures are in the 50s and 60s. And it actually feels quite nice this morning. By the afternoon, we're in the mid 80s. Another day where it's dry, another day where you might have to water those lawns later on this evening. We'll get close to 90 degrees, and we will be in 90 degrees in some spots. I'm going to show you when that is, and also when we get another shot at fall. It's in the forecast. I'll have that coming up. Okay, we'll see you in a bit. Let's get right to the news. The United States Attorney General, Loretta Lynch, will be stopping in central Kentucky today. Her visit is to raise awareness about the growing number of heroin overdoses throughout the country. Country, including right here in yeah, Kentucky. It's been a big problem. Let's go to WKYT's Lauren Miner joining us live in Richmond, where the Attorney General will be making her first stop. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Bill and Andrew. Well, we are seeing the number of drug overdoses quickly rise across the country, specifically here in Kentucky and Ohio, which is why the Department of Justice hopes to raise awareness about this public health crisis. This week, they are declaring it National Heroin and Opioid Awareness Week as part of this initiative. More than 70 U.S. attorneys across the country have already committed to doing more than 160 different events. Attorney General Loretta Lynch will be traveling here to Madison Central High School this morning at 9 a.m. to speak with students about the epidemic. She will be meeting with parents who have lost their children due to overdoses and now belong to the Heroin Education Action Team. She will also talk about how the Justice Department plans to take action of the epidemic by raising awareness, providing resources for treatment, and enforcing rules. Now, Lynch will also be making an appearance at the University of Kentucky today at 3:45 to talk to both students and employees. For now, reporting live in Richmond, Lauren Miner, WKYT. All right, thank you, Lauren. New this morning on WKYT, police are still searching for the suspect behind an early morning robbery at a Lexington drugstore. It happened just after 3 o'clock this morning at the Rite Aid off of Tate's Creek Road and Man War. Police say an armed suspect wearing a surgical mask got away with dozens of prescription pain pills. No injuries were reported. Police say a canine unit was unable to track down the suspect. We've just learned that Kmart is closing more stores, including at least one here in Kentucky. New this morning, Business Insider is reporting that Kmart plans to close more than 60 stores in 28 states by January. Included in that list is the Kmart in Pikeville. This is the second round of closings by Kmart's parent company this year. Back in April, Sears announced it was closing nearly 70 Kmart stores, and five Kentucky stores were included on that list. Lexington police have reissued an alert for two wanted men this morning. Right. Police say they are still looking for Devarius Jones and Taji Winters. Let's go to WKYT's Mike Byer, live in Lexington now at police headquarters with the latest on the investigation. Mike, good morning. Good morning, Bill. This morning, the search continues for both Jones and Winters, and yes, both are considered armed and dangerous. Police say Jones robbed the Hibbert Sports Store in Mist Lake Plaza last week and the Hibbert Sports in the Eastland Shopping Center the week before. Jones and Winters are also both wanted for a home invasion on Lucille Drive. In that case, police say they held a family at gunpoint. Police say anyone who sees either Jones or Winters should not approach them, but call police. Now, at this time, police say Jones Jones and winners are not linked to any other cases. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. All right, Mike, thank you. 
Sheriff's deputies in southern Kentucky are trying to track down a man who may have been involved in a brutal beating. The victim's family says she was beaten with a baseball bat so badly that it knocked her teeth out. Investigators say the woman told them the father of her children, David Stewart Jr., attacked her. Deputies are still trying to track down Stewart at this time. The victim's family tells us that they are upset because he had just been released from jail a few hours before the attack. The woman's sister, who did not want to be identified, says that he was not alone. This morning, authorities are still trying to figure out what motivated a naturalized U.S. citizen from Afghanistan to allegedly carry out a series of weekend bombings in New York and New Jersey. Federal officials are now weighing terror charges against Ahmad Khani uh, Rahami after he was captured in a shootout with police. Henna Daniels has the story. Ahmed Khan Rahami is in custody this morning, facing five counts of attempted murder of police officers and gun charges. This cell phone video shows a 28-year-old handcuffed and laying on the ground in Linden, New Jersey yesterday. President Obama, who was in New York for the U.N. General Assembly, praised the officers who risked their lives to take him down. It's just one more reminder of uh, the extraordinary skill and sacrifice and courage uh, of our law enforcement officers. Authorities say they've directly linked Rahami to Saturday's explosions in both New York City and New Jersey and connected him to five more bombs found Sunday night near a New Jersey train station. They're also looking into whether he had any ties to terror groups. A senior law enforcement official tells CBS News Rahami traveled to his native Afghanistan at least three times in the last two years. He also visited Pakistan. As the investigation continues to unfold, people who live here along the street where the bomb went off are returning home, and businesses are back open once again. All we could do is um, be vigilant and clean up the mess. This is not a block you would think of as a target. This is not Times Square or the World Trade Center or Grand Central Station. So it is very strange that it happened here. Officials say there is no indication of an extremist cell operating in the area and believe Rahami acted alone. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. And the two New Jersey police officers wounded in the shootout were not seriously hurt. Rami was captured just three hours after officials sent out a massive text phone alert with a suspect's name and picture that went out to millions of people in New York and New Jersey. And it's believed to be the first time that the nation's wireless emergency alert system was used to send out an electronic wanted poster. A Southwest Airlines plane bound for Nashville had to make an emergency landing overnight after blowing a tire during takeoff from Los Angeles. 147 people were on board and thankfully no one was hurt. New this morning, two people are recovering right now after a shooting at Las Vegas's McCarran International Airport. It happened just before 6 last night in the airport's parking garage. Police say the victims, a woman and a man, had just arrived from a recent trip when they were both shot by another man. Police say the shooter, who is in police custody, had a former relationship with the woman. Airport officials say no flights were impacted during the investigation. Attorneys for the couples who sued Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis are seeking more than $233,000 in legal fees. The couple sued Davis after she refused to issue marriage licenses following the ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court upholding same-sex marriage. Davis was jailed for several days after refusing to comply with the court order. The state eventually changed marriage license forms so that clerks' names did not have to appear, and the case was later dismissed. The couple's attorney filed the litigation to recover expenses in federal court. The time this morning is 6.39 on WKYT. Well, the University of Kentucky says it is going to stop counting Coke and ice as local food. The Herald Leader reports Kentucky's flagship university is redefining local food in its $245 million contract with Aramark. That contract says Aramark is supposed to buy 20% of its food and drink from locals. Well, last year, the paper says more than a million dollars spent on Coca-Cola and ice was considered to be local. Ice cubes. So, that local ice. I love it. So that's, that's not going to get funny. it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that's interesting. Uh, replacements of Samsung's Galaxy Note 7 will be available starting tomorrow. Regulators recalled the smartphone last week after several reports of the Note 7 catching fire while charging. 
The fires were tracked to a battery problem. Note 7 users can pick up their free replacement from Samsung, their wireless carrier, or the store where they bought the phone. And hope for better results. Yes, I think <laughs> everybody's got around. their fingers crossed on that exactly. one. Exactly. Let's yeah. check to see how traffic is moving this morning. Yeah, our time this morning is now 6.40. Let's check in with Officer Don and live drive traffic. Good morning, Don. Good morning. North Broadway and 3rd, that turns out to be a non-injury crash with a one lane of inbound North Broadway blocked. Uh, not much of a problem getting past that this time of the day. Tate's Creek and Man of War back to normal after that stalled car has been moved out of the way. We're in good shape there. So we get a live look outside at Lexington rush hour traffic flow this morning. Coming in on uh, Nicholasville Road past Man of War, still okay. Same on Harrodsburg Road through the crossover, monitoring those two hot spots. As far as drive times go, we're good to go right now. Coming in from Nicholasville, also from Winchester and Paris with no problems. There's a live look courtesy of the Lexington and Fayette Urban County Government of Harrodsburg and Corporate. Now back. You in the studio. All right, beautiful start to the morning. There's a school bus or two on the way mm -hmm. in this morning as to uh, take those students in to learn. And by the way, if you're on the go, you can get the latest traffic and weather anytime with the WKYT Weather Plus traffic app. Just download that for free in the app or the Google Play stores. And it is great to have you with us. Here we are Tuesday morning on WKYT with a lot more news on the way. Still to come, a Vermont fifth grader is being called a hero for saving his best friend. Find out how he did it after the break. Big dome of higher pressure right over the central portion of the United States. And you know what that means. It keeps us dry, but it also heats us up. How high do we go? Do we see 90s in the forecast and that big blast and cold front this weekend? That's coming up. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. What a great start early this morning. We're in the upper 50s to around 60 degrees. It's one of those mornings when you walk outside, you say, how do I even dress for days like these? When you get off into the fall, here's what happens. You get some drier air filtering on in. What drier air does, it heats up very rapidly and it cools off very rapidly. So when you go off into the nights, it drops those temperatures pretty quickly and you're seeing upper 50s, lower 60s. So it's kind of cool during the morning hours. It's a beautiful shot there. Uh, right by the exit 133 there in Moorhead off 64 over the 801 overpass. It's a beautiful look early this morning. But it's then you get into the afternoon and you're like, okay, it's a little cool this morning. And then the afternoon, you're sitting there a little bit warm. Teachers, heads up, this graphic will not change in the next several days. This is going to be, I may not even change it tomorrow nor the day after because you just don't have to. I mean, we're virtually looking at the same weather the next several days. So you can get the kids outside once again today. I don't see any problems for you uh, as you're doing that. High pressure system back towards central portions of the United States. What that means for us is we're going to stay dry. Another thing that that means for us is it's going to heat up very rapidly. You don't have the clouds laying around, you don't have the or rain falling out of the sky, so nothing to really cool us off. It's just going to continue to heat up. We'll be roughly 90 degrees tomorrow. That will go for your Thursday, too. Look at that showing up across the region, nearing 90 degrees during midweek. That's Wednesday, Thursday, and even late into the work week on Friday, too, and dry each and every single day. But like I was talking about early this morning, that doesn't mean it's going to be nasty outside. 90 degrees low humidity isn't too bad. It's really not all that bad. Now, I'm, I know you're probably thinking, well, we haven't really had that in a long time, so I don't really know what that feels like, but trust me, it's not that bad. So we'll take it the next few days as humidity is way down. The problem with that, though, is we're staying dry, no rain to wash out all the pollen, so a lot of us dealing with allergies and some sinuses, too. Seven-day forecast, here's the breakdown of it. We'll stay in the mid to upper 80s the next several days, and, well, a few days, really, if you're going by definition. Go off towards your weekend, Friday into your weekend. Big festivals going on. Burgoo Festival happening. That kicks off Friday into your weekend there in Lawrenceburg. My friends over there in Anderson County, hope that goes well for you guys. Also, Fort Herod Jazz and Art Festival. That is going to be a fun one there this weekend off in Harrodsburg. So really, really fun events there in Mercer County, Anderson County. We have several events going on. I always talk about events. You know I do. And, and I'll talk about several more, too, as we go throughout the work week. But Events this weekend, whoever is the coordinator, give them a raise, man. It's looking good. Perfect timing on planning these events. Really good looking weather this weekend. See, Fantastic. I like that you tell us what's going on because sometimes you don't know and you're right. like, hey, right. we'll check that out. Some of the events? Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. a little run over to Harrodsburg or mm -hmm. Lawrenceburg. Get the kids yeah. out, man. Great towns, nice. no doubt. Really Thank nice. you, Micah. 647 is our time. Two Vermont boys have built quite the special bond, and their family members are very glad to know they have each other's backs. Yeah, Michonne and Liam have been best friends for years. They spend all of their free time together just hanging out, playing sports and video games. 
Well, Boy's bond was put to, to the test, though, this week after Liam found himself in a dangerous situation. The fifth graders were eating lunch at school when Liam started choking. I put it in the side of my cheek, took a sip of milk, and the milk carried it down. I didn't know what he knew. I didn't. I was just really scared. I, I was tingly, so I jumped over about two, two people, people, and I did the Heimlich. And it worked. Michon says he'd never tried or even practiced the Heimlich maneuver. It didn't matter. After a couple of tries, Liam stopped choking thanks to his very best friend. Well, how cool <laughs> is that? I love that he never didn't know. I guess right. he just saw it on some videos and was like, I'm going to do that. You know, sometimes <laughs> you jump into action, and especially for your best friend, right? I know. I love that Good story. Deal. They're cute. And we hope you'll keep it here with us on WKYT. CBS This Morning is on the way very shortly. And more news from WKYT is on the way as well. Stay with us. Coming up, the new commissioner of the NYPD joins us with the latest on the bombing suspect in custody and the overall investigation. Plus, Charlie Rose talks American politics with U2's Bono. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning next. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. The time now is 6.52 on your Tuesday. The U.S. Attorney General is coming to Kentucky today. That's just one of the stories making headlines this morning. Bill has a look at what's trending on the web. Well, it's busy in our newsroom as we keep you updated on air and online. Loretta Lynch will first be speaking at Madison Central High School in Richmond before taking part in a discussion at the University of Kentucky. She is here to try to raise awareness about heroin overdoses. We'll have full reports on her visit to Richmond on WKYT News at noon and, of course, online as it's happening. We're also tracking the investigation into an early morning robbery. Now, this happened at the Rite Aid in Tates Creek Center. Police say a gunman stole prescription pain pills in that situation. A tow truck driver killed last night while on the job in Powell County. Investigators say Mark Banks was hit by a car on the Mountain Parkway while loading another car onto a tow truck. You'll find those stories plus details about which Kmart store in Kentucky is closing by year's end. That in the forecast right now on WKYT.com. Two people are recovering this morning after a bad crash near downtown Lexington. Police say a car driving through a field near Manchester and South Forbes went over an embankment and flipped over next to railroad tracks. Both the driver and the passenger were trapped inside. Firefighters say neither were wearing seatbelts. Crews say both were taken to UK hospital with life threatening injuries. Well, a well known Lexington restaurant is closing its doors. Sal's restaurant in Lexington's Lansdowne Shopping Center is closing down. Sal's, along with its next door neighbor, Meats Barbecue Market, will close permanently this Sunday. The Bluegrass Hospitality Group says the closure is necessary in order to double the size and capacity of its Malone's Banquets facilities. Owners say the new banquet space is scheduled to open November 21st. All right, changes there. Mm -hmm. But like I said, everybody loves Malone's. They do. I think they, they, they will like be missed those, as well. Yeah, they will. There's mm -hmm. a lot of folks uh, like to gather there. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, cosmetics maker L'Oreal USA says it's building thousands of solar panels at its manufacturing facilities in Kentucky and Arkansas. The company says the move will help cut carbon emissions while creating two of the biggest solar powered projects in both states. The subsidiary of L'Oreal Group says it will install 5,000 solar panels at its Kentucky plant that's up in Florence and another 4,000 at its Arkansas plant. Work is expected to begin on that later this year. The CEO of Wells Fargo is planning to apologize before a congressional panel today for betraying customers' trust. Wells Fargo employees are accused of opening up millions of accounts without the knowledge of customers in order to meet sales targets. In prepared testimony, Chief Executive John Stumpf says he is deeply sorry that the bank failed to meet its responsibility to customers and did not act sooner to stem what he calls this unacceptable activity. Well, AAA says there's no sense paying for premium or premium gasoline if your car isn't designed is designed to run on regular. The club did research showing that premium did not increase horsepower or fuel economy. It also didn't reduce emissions or clean engines any better than regular gas. Premium blends can cost around 50 cents per gallon more than regular, but AAA says that's money out the tailpipe. 
So there you go. Okay, well, there's some info to have. Well, construction workers in China have just finished up the world's highest cable stayed bridge. And you do not want to look no. down. Cars will be driving nearly 2,000 feet above a river. The bridge is expected to be open to traffic by the end of next year. Ooh. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Exactly. Not a fan of heights. <laughs> would sure would want to walk across that. No. All right, a volcano eruption temporarily shut down the main airport in Costa Rica early in the week. Now, take a look. Despite some thick clouds, you can clearly see the volcano erupt, sending a cloud of ash up to 10,000 feet in the air. The volcanic ash forced the closure of the airport in the capital, San Jose. Officials met overnight and are scheduled to announce this morning if the airport can be reopened. A local newspaper says the volcano erupted at least four times throughout the day. Scary situation there. Well, that's there. a problem. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. All right, we have a beautiful day on the way it looks like, and we want to check in with Micah for a final look at our forecast. Yeah, check out that sky cam shot here in Lexington. Gorgeous start, and that goes for Moorhead, too. Down south, if you look down 75 into the Laurel County area, that's where you could see Laurel County, Whitley County, head off toward, uh, say, if you work your way into the Jellicoe Mountain region, that's where you're going to see some of that fog. 25 east, traveling into Knox County and interchange of 119. As you make your way down toward Bell, those are areas that the airports are actually picking up on some fog, some low visibility. Watch out for that. 86 degrees by the afternoon, guys. We're going to creep up to 90 degrees. Oh. There by midweek <laughs> and into late week, but a nice cold front this week. Yeah, good, good deal. The calendar and the season will get together, yeah, right? Will. Nobody's more up to date than you. Thank you for being on WKYT. CBS This Morning is next. Have a great day.